Okay, we are back for one more review, and that is the newest film of the DCEU, um, excluding Shazam, considering that's more recent, but the one that came before, and that is uh, the follow-up to Justice League. We learned about this character in the film, but he got his solo film after. <laughs> Easy there. Uh, this is Aquaman. In their own hands, it would bring destruction. But in the hands of the true heir, it would unite above and below. The time has come for Atlantis to rise again. We must stop him. And how do you propose we do that? By retrieving this. I already got one of those. Not like this one you don't. The war is coming to the surface whether you like it or not. Mother always knew you were special. She believed you'd be the one to unite our two worlds. Atlantis has always had a king. Now I need something more. But what could be greater than a king? There you go. So this came out around December. I saw it. I think I saw it once. I saw it with my parents. I didn't get to see it with my aunt. Um, and this was when a bunch of other films were coming out that were huge, like Mary Poppins Returns, Bumblebee, Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse, and I believe, I think there was one other one too. There was a lot of movies in December of 2018. Yeah. This was definitely on the higher end for me. Um, this film's a blast. I really like this film. I think a lot of that has to do with James Wan being a director, Conjuring, Conjuring 2. Saw. He's a really good horror director, but I was curious. I was like, he's never done a superhero film. He did Furious 7, which was totally different from all yeah. of his other films. I mean, it's an action movie. It is. It is. Aquaman's an action movie, but it's a superhero action movie. And I was curious because he did Furious 7, and that's still my favorite Fast and Furious movie to date. I really yeah. enjoyed it. But I was like, how is he going to translate from horror to um, superhero um, film? And Honestly, he, I mean, this film made a billion dollars. Yeah. It's, it made a bunch of Surprisingly, in my yeah. opinion. This movie is really, this is, this is a very good case of you probably will love it, but you'll hate it. In my case, and I think in your case, uh, I loved it. I really, really loved it. And I wasn't expecting to love it as much, but I think that has a lot to do with the directing, um, the cast the comedy and the self-awareness that this is an Aquaman yeah. movie. And they just lean into the campiness of this film. So, plot-wise, this takes place after Justice League. Uh, Arthur, Arthur Curry, played yeah. by Jason Momoa, is, um, he is headed back to his hometown, and his brother, his, uh, was it adopted? His brother, yeah. who has taken over Atlantis, is now looking to conquer the rest of the sea and Arthur's basically dragged back into it and he has to face off against his brother as well as um, Black Manta, who is kind of kind yeah. of thrown in there, but there's like two villains in this, his brother and then um, Black Manta. Yeah. That's essentially the plot of this movie. I was surprised to see this as a sequel to Justice League because I thought origin stories usually are prequels. Yeah. But it does it in flashbacks. It does it in flashbacks where it shows Arthur as a kid and then it goes back to him as an adult. Yeah. I didn't think it worked very well in BVS where they showed flashback clips of Justice League. No. Nah. But in this movie, the transitions were so smooth, and then transitions back to him being an adult, I was okay with it. Mm. I don't know if you feel the same, but I thought the flashbacks were quick enough that it didn't take me out of the movie. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And that fight scene, um, we'll get to it later on, but that fight scene with Nicole Kidman in the lighthouse. Yeah. That was awesome. It was like a full wide take and it was like a rotating around the entire room. I love fights filmed like that. Yeah. So that's the plot. We'll get into the cast. Um, Jason Momoa is this massive hulking dude. He plays Arthur Curry 
um, with Aquaman, who I thought was good in Justice League, but he, I needed to see more of him to really get a feeling of like, do I like this guy? You know? Yeah. He did fine. Again, he did fine in Justice League, but I was like, I really want my, his own movie. And when it came around, I was like, this is fun. Yeah. This is fun. Um, Amber Heard plays Mira, who, you know, love interest and main female lead. Um, also, I mean, she's not the greatest actress like Jason Momoa, yeah. but I liked her. Yeah. She was in a tad bit of Justice League, and I didn't really get a flair. Uh, I didn't really she get was. any. Yeah, she looked different, and she was in that I one. I didn't see her. She was in that one underwater scene before Steppenwolf attacks the little Atlantis area he was in. It's very yeah. quick. You probably wouldn't have recognized her because she looked different. No, but then again, I don't remember much of Justice League either. <laughs> like we talked about previously. Yeah. yeah. No. You've only seen it once, right? Once. And you've been talking about how I was waiting a year to see it. Yeah. Wasn't worth the wait. Nah. But at least you saw it. You said yeah. you could see it. I feel like it's a rite of passage watching all DCU films, whether bad or good. Yeah. The, the good news is they start out rocky. We have some really bad ones, but there's also some really good ones. Oh, yeah. And I feel like the DCU is going in a better direction. We'll see if that Joker film, which isn't even really a part of the same universe, is going to be good. Yeah. I'm not really that interested. I'll probably see it on TV. Really? Yeah, really. Just because the cast and the fact that we're rebooting Joker again. Yeah, I'm intrigued, but at the same time, I keep seeing the trailer for it in the theaters, and I'm like... Yeah. It, it will be the first R-rated Joker movie. Hmm. Alrighty. So that's intriguing, and it's the director uh, from the Hangover trilogy. Yeah. It could be really good, or it could be pretty bad. We'll see. Alrighty. Now back to Aquaman. Yes, yeah, sorry. Getting off track. Now back to Aquaman. Willem Dafoe as um, this uh, as Volko, who, who is basically um, Arthur's. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Partner. His teacher. He's his teacher. Oh, yeah. uh, and Willem Dafoe's great and everything. He was Green Goblin in the original Spider Man. He's good. He's yeah. really good. He's good in everything, so obviously he's be good in this. Patrick Wilson is King Orm. That's Arthur's brother. Okay. He looks ridiculous with blonde hair. Yeah. But Honestly. I gotta say, he sold it. He sold me on his character. He was totally over the top. Very fierce, and I like him as an actor, so I was okay, but he looked pretty dumb. Yeah. And pretty much this is my biggest complaint about the movie. The costumes are the ugliest in this movie than I've seen in any movie I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I agree fully with that. I liked Aquaman's costume. Yeah, but that was probably, like, him and Andrew Heard had probably the only good costumes. Did you like Nicole Kidman's? Um, yeah, but also Black Manta's. His was the worst! <laughs> <laughs> that was very comic book accurate, and it kind of worked for me, it kind of didn't. It was cool, but to the point where it was like, whoa, that's weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Costumes, oh, the, the fishman and the yeah, that was yeah. kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Speaking of Nicole Kidman, she plays uh, his um, his mother, Queen Atlanta. Yeah. She's not in the film as much as I guess the trailers would have led on, but I liked her. Yeah. I thought she was pretty badass. The reveal that she's still alive, I was like, okay. Yeah. It's cool. Then you've got Dolph Lundgren as uh, one of the captains of Atlantis. He also looked ridiculous with that red hair and everything. Yeah. He was talking to King Orm. But it's Dolph Lundgren. He's fine. Uh, yeah. He's not in it very much. This is where we get to Black Manta. Yahya Abdul Mateen, who is a black actor who I've seen in other things. He was in Us. He is a good actor. I think he was way over the top as Black Manta. Yeah. And I'm not really sure if I'm excited to see more of him. I know we'll get more of him yeah. after the post credit scene in Aquaman. But... He's a good actor. I just felt like his fight scenes with um, Aquaman, especially that one in that uh, on those rooftops. Yeah. I love the fight scene. His costume and his character, and it was just so over the top. I didn't buy it fully. Yeah. But again, he wasn't the worst thing ever. I just didn't really think he was that memorable. And Michael Beach, who plays uh, Black Manta's father, not as over the top, no. but he also gets killed in the opening minutes of the movie. Yeah. And. I didn't really feel like he needed to be killed so quickly, but I understand why they did it. Yeah. So, um, I think that's, am I missing anybody in the cast? I think I've said everybody. I can't think of anyone else. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of good talent in here. I mean, yeah. excluding Dolph Lundgren. Oh, God. Okay, anyway, um, so we'll get on to cinematography and effects. 
again, like Wonder Woman, not to the same caliber, but like Wonder Woman, James Wan has has engulfed this movie in a gorgeous looking um, just bubble of color and uh, visual flair that I love. Even when they were filming in the desert, I thought it was a really nice departure from the underwater um, aesthetic. Yeah. And I'd like to point out that Atlantis looks awesome. Oh yeah. It really does. The whole Atlantis area when they're fighting in that area like with the lava yeah. and the tridents. I thought that all worked. The fight scenes itself, I know some of it was practically done because they yeah. were actually in it fighting that scene with Nicole Kidman in the lighthouse where she's kicking those guys butts. Yeah. And it's doing a full pan around 360. Awesome. Might be my favorite fight in the whole movie. This is one of the DCEU films that I feel actually listened to its fans and said, we're not going to go too CGI heavy. It was yeah. a nice blend. There's plenty of CGI in this movie, but it's used sparingly for like all of the whales and like the aquatic yeah. creatures and the end fight. And the final fight scene was CGI heavy. Yes, but I expected it to be, and that's okay because being underwater and those giant crabs, this movie has an octopus playing drums. Yeah. This movie knows what it is, you know? Yeah. So I had a really good time with it, and the, the color, again, like I said, Wonder Woman was a little more gorgeous, but this would probably be my second favorite DCU film from a visual standpoint. Uh, it looks gorgeous, and uh, I have I have all these films on Blu-ray, save for Man of Steel. Aquaman might be, it's one of the better looking ones. Yeah. It just has this, like, I just love the tropical, um, aquatic aesthetic and look to the film uh, as a whole. Even the scenes out of water look really good and there's yeah. plenty of color. So that's that's just me. Um, the music's the last thing we have to talk about and I'm trying to remember who actually composed the music. I should know this, but I feel like, oh, it was Rupert Gregson Williams who also composed um, Wonder Woman. Oh, okay. Yeah, so um, I actually really like the score for Aquaman. I don't know if he's got a, a theme like Wonder Woman did. Yeah. Does he? I don't think he does. No idea. But he is really cool. He's very badass. I love the scene in the beginning where he's fighting Black Man and his father, and he's just plowing through guys. Yeah. That was that. I could tell that there was a lot of practical effects done with how they shot it, and um, James Wan flipping the camera upside down. That was always really cool. Yeah. They did that in Paris Seven. Oh yeah. Um, but the music for this movie is definitely one of the better DCU scores, and well, it's not as good as the Wonder Woman one, I will say I noticed it, I enjoyed it, and it was very uh, intense and uh, a fast-paced um, score for the film. Yeah. So, uh, if you haven't already guessed to really enjoy this movie, aside from the costume design and yeah. some characters being completely over the top, and the fight scene at the end being a little CGI heavy, although the fight between him and his brother, yeah, not CGI heavy, it was just the two of them fighting on top of that like ship or something. Yeah. That was cool. Um, yeah, so despite his flaws, I really enjoyed Aquaman, and I'm going to have to give Aquaman a 7. I, I think a 7 is pretty solid. That's the same score I gave Man of Steel. I like Aquaman more than Man of Steel, so if I could do decimals, I'd probably give it a 7.5 or even higher. Aquaman's a fun movie. Not everyone's going to love it, but I just love the over-the-top, um, like, drenched-in-color uh, film that, uh, that we ended up getting. What do you score Aquaman? I will also give it a 7. <laughs> just like Man of Steel, we both... We both yeah. eat at sevens, yeah. But even I would agree Aquaman is better than Man of Steel, in my opinion. Yeah, it is. It is, just from a bunch of... And I think from directing, too. Zack Snyder hasn't really had his hands on any films prior to... Uh, no, actually, sorry, after um, Suicide Squad. Like, he has only directed two films in the DCU. Yeah. For three. For two and a half, if you consider Justice League, he only directed half. Yeah. But we've gotten Patty Jenkins doing Wonder Woman, James Wan, of all people, doing Aquaman, and David Ayer doing Suicide Squad, and David F. Sandberg, who also um, was a part of James Wan's horror uh, buddy team. He did Shazam. We'll be talking about Shazam soon. Yeah. Um, and I just think the DCU is going in a better direction than it started. And like I said, Aquaman, Shazam, and Wonder Woman are all certified fresh, I think. 
Aquaman's actually at 60, I'm sorry, but they're all fresh tomatoes. Yeah. So we're at the point now where there's seven DCU films. I believe the majority are, like, four of them are rotten, but the other three are fresh. So it is working out of the hole that it kind of dug itself in. Yeah. Um, that's all. That's all I have to say. I really enjoyed Aquaman. I, it's definitely a film I love rewatching, just for the fight scenes, the energy, the un, the underwater sequences, and just the level of fun and playfulness that it had. Because it knows it's a film called Aquaman, yeah. and it knows it's ridiculous. So it worked for me. I think Momoa was definitely better in this than he was Justice League. Yeah, and I greatly enjoyed Aquaman. I think that's all we have to say. Yep. Seven from you. Seven from me. Check it out. See what you think. Uh, we'll be back very soon to talk about Shazam. And if we don't get to that review first, we'll also be reviewing, like we said, Avengers Endgame, uh, Solo, Rogue One, and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. And we also plan on reviewing uh, The Conjuring 1 and 2, two of uh, James Wan's other films that are... I thought we were going to do The Conjuring awesome. Universe. Sorry, The Conjuring Universe, but we'll probably start with Conjuring 1 oh, and yeah. 2, and then we'll, we'll also be doing the Annabelle trilogy, hopefully closer to uh, Halloween time. So and maybe we can also roast the Ouija movie. Yes, we could talk about both Ouija movies, because you yeah. and I have both seen it. That'll be fun. Always fun to talk about a movie that's just plain garbage. You remember our Jaws reviews with Marco. It, it'll be... I don't think we've actually done a movie where you and I like just straight up hated the film. Yeah. That... That'll be fun. Like you just said, it'll be like a roast. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. Wow. Stay tuned for all of those reviews. I don't know which is coming first. Probably Shazam, but the other ones could get mixed in there. We'll see. But the bottom line is we have a lot more reviews to go. And we hope you guys watch um, all of them, all these previous ones. And uh, stay tuned until the next one. We will talk to you guys then. All right. See you.